All the time that a business is tracking their cash transactions and balances, their bank is tracking them too. When these two records are compared together, they can ensure that both sides, the accounting records and the bank records, are correct. That's why most businesses compare their records to bank records at least once per month. This process of comparing bank and accounting records together is known as a reconciliation. Each month, a bank provides a special report of an account's balance along with any deposits or withdrawals the company has made that month. This report is known as a bank statement. On the bank statement, deposits are often listed as credits to the account, and withdrawals are often listed as debits. Now that sounds kind of strange because that's exactly opposite of what we learned about assets earlier. That's because to a bank, your account isn't an asset. It's actually a liability. Each time you deposit money, the bank's liability to you increases. They will have to pay you that money back someday. And when money is taken out, that's a reduction of the bank's liability. So that's a debit. Pretty cool, right? When a company looks at their bank statement and compares it with their accounting records, typically these two numbers don't match. Usually that's because of two things. Either there is a timing difference between the bank's records and yours, or there's an error somewhere. Part of the reconciliation process is to correct the errors and timing differences to arrive at a true balance that matches in both the bank and the accounting records. We mentioned earlier that when you write a check, the bank doesn't immediately see it. They can't see it until weeks or months later when it's finally cashed. So while the accounting records show that check, the bank statement won't. That's one example of a timing difference. When a check is written but the bank hasn't seen it yet, we call this an outstanding check. Outstanding checks will need to be subtracted from the bank balance to arrive at our true cash balance. Another timing difference are deposits that are made that the bank doesn't have a record of. These are less common, but if you make a deposit over a weekend or a holiday, sometimes the bank doesn't record them until days later when they are open. Deposits that haven't been recorded yet are known as outstanding deposits, or deposits in transit. Deposits in transit need to be added to the bank balance to reconcile the true cash balance. There are also several items that the bank tracks and reports on a bank statement that the company won't have record of in their accounting. One such example is bank fees. Each month, banks charge businesses a small fee for the services the bank provides to them. These fees appear on the bank statement and need to be subtracted from the accounting cash balance. Banks also pay interest to businesses on deposit balances that they have at the bank. These interest amounts need to be added to the accounting cash balance. Finally, banks will record and report any non-sufficient fund checks and fees for any dishonored checks that were deposited. These will both need to be subtracted from the accounting cash balance as well. So the calculation for the bank reconciliation would look something like this. I usually begin on the bank statement side. And we start by looking on the bank statement for the ending balance in the bank account. Then from that ending balance, we'll need to add in all of those missing elements that we discussed earlier. So we'll start by looking for any deposits in transit, any deposits that we have record of that the bank does not, and we'll add those to the balance. Then we'll go through and look through for any outstanding checks, checks that we have record of writing, but the bank has not received yet. We need to subtract all of those out of the ending statement balance. Once we've done that, then we can get a new total, and that is our adjusted bank balance. Then, moving over to the accounting records side, we'll start with our cash balance from our accounting records. From that, we'll need to add in any of the things from the bank statement that we don't have record of. Those things would be like, for example, interest. If we earned any interest, we'll need to add that to our cash balance. We'll subtract out any service fees and also any non-sufficient funds checks and their corresponding fees. Once we have all of that, there may be some mistakes that were made, either a mistake that was made by the bank or more often than not, an, a mistake that was made by us in entering in the accounting records. So if there's any errors or mistakes that we need to correct, we'll need to add or subtract those from the balance. They could be added or subtracted just depending on what the error was and how it was created. Once all of those calculations are finished, we can add up our new cash balance and we now have an adjusted balance for cash for our accounting records. Once we have both adjusted balances, they need to be compared to see if they equal each other. Both of those balances should equal if we've done our reconciliation correct. 
If they don't equal, you'll need to go back above and look for anything else that you may have missed. But you don't want to finish a reconciliation until you know that the adjusted bank balance and the adjusted cash balance are both equal to each other. Even in our digital world, where accounting software talks to bank software, mistakes are still made and fraud can still be committed. Having a real human being sit down and compare these two records each month is an important step to ensuring the accuracy of the accounting and bank records and to reduce the risk of fraud. To learn more about cash controls and other accounting topics, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit ToriNorman.com.